The following podcast is not affiliated with the developers who have created the games being reviewed. The reviews are solely the opinions of the hosts to be used to make an educated decision on what games to download and play. Hello gamers and welcome to Budget Arcade, a free-to-play gaming podcast to help you navigate through the growing realm of free-to-play games. I'm Scott. Ah, I'm Jeff. Hello, Mark. And welcome to episode number 68. Yes, I did in fact say the wrong number last episode. Last episode was 67. This one is 68. Everyone so one more noticed. for that magic number. Oh, and we got a good game picked out for magic number uh, something that's wholly appropriate for the entire family. Yes, but totally you'll, appropriate. You'll have to but wait till we'll the, end to the, the end of the episode. Yeah. All right, Mark, what was this week's game? Uh, so this week we played Hyperscape, the recently released first-person shooter battle royale title from Ubisoft Montreal, who also developed uh, the upcoming Assassin's Creed Valhalla, game uh far cry new dawn which is the suedo expansion to far cry 5 um watchdogs and the oft forgotten for honor it was released on july 12th of this year and it's on the playstation 4 xbox one and pc now, just to note, this is the beta of it so it's a uh, still early release I'm sure it's going to change as the game goes on. But again, like Fortnite, what was that in beta for like five years or something like that? So the thing about beta is people throw that term around. And I think there's like a, a reason for it because there's like s- certain rules around full release. And I think technically it's still in beta. So <laughs> uh, Fortnite, I mean, so I, I, I don't put much stock in that. This is the game that we put out. It feels... Uh, like a complete it game. It doesn't like well, if this is Darwin if this is the out, finished version. Like beta, and this game's in trouble. This feels complete. It feels finished, which is probably isn't. But games nowadays never are. Like yeah, I I, I have to agree. I don't feel the Ubisoft polish that should be there to be honest. But let's get into the gameplay of this gameplay. All right, so. This is a Battle Royale, uh, which we've played many on this podcast before. So if you don't know, what is it, 100 players in this one? No, the the solo is is 100 players. It's you and 99 other people. I think there was, it was squads of three that I played, and I want to say there was only like 30 players at a time. No, I have way more than that. Okay, so it is a solo, the solo is 100 players as well, and I know the squad is definitely a lot less because there was barely anybody in those um the queuing up plaza i guess it would be called yeah well so unlike most so if you don't know a battle royale i'm going to explain it for all the one person who's listening to this 10 years from now who's never heard of a battle royale game everybody gets dropped on the same map and that map shrinks and you kill each other until there's either one person or one team left depending on the mode now most battle royales use a circle that shrinks as you play this game does not do that they have like sectors similar to how like darwin did it and they would close certain sectors so if you're in one of the sectors you need to get out there is a reason in my opinion that all the good battle royales use circles because it works i also get trying to innovate and do something different which they do on some things that I really like, but this whole shutting down sectors thing to I me, th- I, 
It just doesn't work as well. I, as the short I mean, I'm circle. I'm kind of on the opposite. I actually like the. It forces you to move in an uh, inconsistent pattern. Um, you know, it's because the the sectors shutting down are completely random. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to what sector uh, closes down, and it's not like it just automatically shuts down. It shuts down over a period of time. But I I. I liked it is because it forced it forced you to it for well, forced everybody to go in different directions all the time. I, I have a theory about how these sectors close, and I I don't know if it's accurate or not. But in the queuing lobby, you can actually look out over the map, and if you look above the sectors, there's actually like it's like a beam of light that comes down and like touches the sectors, and some of the beams are like higher like placed higher up and some of them are lower and i'm i think that might be the order and i don't know if it's highest to lowest or lowest to highest but i think that's the order that these sectors actually close to be honest but again i could be completely way off base but as i was looking at that while i was in the, the loading lobby i'm like okay what is what is that exactly and what purpose does it have hmm interesting uh, so let's get into uh, some of the unique mechanics that this game has. It doesn't have to do with the shrinking of the map. Uh, like in most battle royales, you loot for armor, weapons, throwables, that sort of thing. Now, one of the things that this game does different is you also loot for like abilities. So think of like Overwatch or like Apex Legends, where uh, these characters have abilities on cooldown. Now, in this game, you find these abilities on the map while you play. So and they're if, called hacks. Hacks. So if you find one, you pick it up and you have that ability. Now, if you have that ability or you have a gun, let's say a shotgun, and you happen upon another shotgun, you can pick up that shotgun and it then upgrades your current shotgun. So... If you're running an SMG and you find another SMG and pick it up, it goes to level two, three, and I think up to four, right? Um, yes, I believe so. There's like a maximum upgrade after mm-hmm. the fourth one or onto the fifth one, I believe. Yep. So, and the same can be said for your upgrades, your uh, cooldowns, your abilities your on hacks. cooldown, right? Your hacks. So as you kill someone and you loot their body if they were running something similar to you you pick it up and then you level up that uh ability or that weapon uh, i think this is a really cool idea it's different than any other uh, battle royale i've seen before in this regard i really like these mechanics i think it's really cool i i, I did i like that as well um but to be honest i didn't notice a huge difference difference between you know level one shotgun onto like a level three or level four shotgun you know upgraded it it didn't the, feel any different uh, i didn't feel like let's I was talk about those those faster. abilities for a minute um i i noticed that there are certain abilities and i'll just use the invisibility um ability uh, as an example but it so I'd be in a, I'd be engaged in a in a in a in a fight with some random person, and all of a sudden they go invisible, and I don't I don't I don't remember how long they stay invisible or you know how long the ability lasts once you use it. But I noticed that there's there's no like you know most games if you turn invisible there's like a, a faint silhouette of the character. Um, or you don't perhaps move as fast, or, um, you know, there's some offsetting thing that, yes, while you are invisible, and that is an added bonus to the gameplay, it also takes away from certain other aspects. The visibility in this game is almost like a cheat code, because you'd be engaged in a gunfight and you use the invisibility uh, hack, and all of a sudden, you're gone. You, nobody nobody can see you and that allows you to get out of the the, the gunfight that you know you're engaged in and it just seems like it's the the most powerful thing you can do in the game at least from my opinion and I don't know if you guys had the pleasure of using any of the other abilities but like I use the mine um, I can't remember the ones I've used I know the mine which is 
Well, the ball was the other one that it seemed to be, They're and other something. people have alluded to it, is that it just, you know, it's just an escape mechanism. And I, I think that's cheap. I, I don't like that. I don't I don't like that, that ability to get out of a, a gunfight. I think you should either, you're, you're either fight or you're dead, you know? Yeah, there, so I remember there was an armor up ability. There was a mine. There was like a, it was almost like an EMP. There was a ability that allows you to spot invisible people. Um, there was the invisibility. There was the ball. Did I already say the ball? Probably. Uh, yeah. Trying to There's think. There's like a mine. Yeah, I think there was like two others, but I, you know, like I didn't play enough games to get well enough versed with all the abilities or the guns for that matter. Because there's, there's probably what I want to say twelve of each in this game when you first start the game you go into like a lobby where you can actually test all this stuff out before you jump into the world into a game which is i think really cool so you you can see how the ball works or the mind works or invisibility works or how a gun feels so that way you can do that without having someone shoot you in the back of the head before you dive into an actual game i don't uh, i I didn't have um I thought that you know that Suedo tutorial once you start the game is is pretty cool. Um, I thought the the guns in the game are uh, there. There was there was a lot of them. Um, I, I think it, I I haven't played probably as many battle royale games as you guys have, but it just seems like there was <laughs> there. You will now. Uh, um, so I, I thought the, I thought the selection of guns in the game was good. Um, spanned a, spanned a, a large array of different types of guns. Um, I didn't like the the melee mechanics in this game though. Mm. Yeah, so you do have your melee, but what you'll notice is there's not generally speaking, if you're running through a city, you don't see guns just laying on the ground. You have to at least for me in my experience i had to go into buildings and there's like these orange glass windows that you have to go through and you can break them or shoot them to get through them and then they respawn Uh, and i found that's where you find your weapons is behind those or inside buildings you're not really going to find them just in the streets or outside really one thing that this game does different than you know how the plethora of of other battle royales is that it when it drops you onto the map it you're like in this little pod, and you can kind of navigate rather quickly to the section of map that you that you want to start out on. And and as far as I know, there was only one map, correct? Um, I didn't miss a bunch of maps. Yeah, that I, I, I only noticed one. Yeah, so generally it's, battle royales just have one. Yeah, so it's a you know it's a your typical futuristic city, um, virtual, and city. you you dropped with this. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> You're dropped in this pod, and you have the ability to go real quick to a section of the map, and then you eject out of the pod, and you drop on onto the map. And I found to go to uh, you know like a random corner of the map was my best. It, it would help me out uh, going to the corner of the map, so I can get kind of a head start to uh, run around, try to loot some loot some stuff. Uh, get my bearings and then and then all chaos you know breaks out and um, I thought this this game did a really good job of load times you know they're for having a hundred person map this puts you right in games really quick and and I thought that was pretty impressive you you say yeah whatever when I say a virtual world but this is like Ubisoft is trying to make this have kind of a storyline and it's like a ready player one style battle royale so to speak mm, yeah and, um d- like did either Assassin's one of Creed. you yeah but no, nobody plays these games nobody plays these games no, no, there is no I, campaign I, there is no campaign but there is like right i'm well, talking about story I'm did, like, nobody story plays the game in the story. beginning yeah but can you recall yes, anything about the story um there is oh, it was you basically ready the... player one you go into i i can basically said that this is like a dystopian area and to escape it people are starting to go online and play these games and oh, this is a specific <laughs> yeah this and this is this is a game that you can you know earn your glory and earn money on in within the uh the community so it's it's exactly ready player one 
except in battle royale form. Have you read the book, Scott? I have. No, no, I've only seen the movie. Oh. So it's, oh. I'm basing what I know of the movie on this game, and it's basically it's almost exactly the same. Well, you know, concept. Yeah, the concept's pretty much the same. The book is just so like. Oh, I know. I know. I've heard the book is way better. I just have not had a chance to read it. All right. And we're not going to go into the book versus the movie on this podcast. The heck we're not. Here we go. All right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so I, I think that's the basics of the gameplay, though, right? I mean, well, did you either one of you play the, the, uh, the squads at all? I played one no. squad match where... Uh, Cody and I, formerly of Budget Arcade, dropped in and had a rando with us. And so, oh, yeah, okay, this is probably what you're trying to get at, is the respawning mechanic. Yes, uh, the respawn. well, the lack thereof respawning what do you mean? mechanic. But There's no... Oh, gosh, it was terrible. Well, it's not a lack of respawning. You can still respawn. Essentially, you are a... okay. So if you're in a team of three, let's say the three of us, Mark, Jeff, and Scott, we're playing a game. We're shooting, we're fighting. I get killed in this game, and Mark and Scott are fine. Mark and Scott can keep roaming around like they're doing, but essentially the dead person becomes a ghost. And you can still kind of move around the map like you would, and maybe even offer intel. Uh, But if you want to get back in the game, you have to go to one of these little resurrection spots. And then your teammate has to go there and like hold a button to resurrect you. I don't hate okay. this. It's different. But I like it. Hold on, hold on, Jeff. Don't you, you know tell those, me to hold on. You know what the resurrection spots are, right? Bidets. No. So, gosh, bidets. Whatever, <laughs> no, it's whenever a opposing player dies. <laughs> Wash your virtual ass. Whenever an opposing player dies, that's when one of those res points actually spawns and you can go to that res point and be res by your partners. Um, hey. So Scott yeah, is so not we, having it today. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's basically where the res points come from in the first place. Like, you actually have to kill or, you know, have another team kill another player from an opposing team before one of those points even pops up. I did not know that. Yeah, and making your way to those points is rather hard sometimes because you get, like, a point where it's at and, like... Here, hold on. Okay, Dominic, come on. Mark, what did you do to Scott? (laughs) He did not like my virtual ass comment. It might have been your suggestion that these resurrection points are bidets. I, I thought that was good. <laughs> you were saying? I'm scared to talk now, uh, so. No, no, it's fine. I, I, Donovan been, was kind of distracting me, so I couldn't. I've been so, yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's basically it. Like, And you've got these res points that are popping up when opposing players die. And to get to those res points, you have to, a lot of times you have to transverse the city to get to those res points as sections are closing and as there's battles going on. So actually getting res by your teammates is a little bit tricky because they have to a lot of times go into a firefight to get to that point where you're being resed at. I kind of like that. I like the risk reward. Uh, So I've still, and I believe Scott does too, play a lot of Warzone. And anytime you go to a buy station to buy someone back, you have a pretty good chance of running into someone else, especially in the late games, the circle gets smaller. So I don't mind the risk reward. I I think it's a cool, unique system. They're doing something different. Now, is it better than what we've got in other games? You know, you'd have to play and see how you feel about it, but it's different at least. And and even as I critique the zones being closed the way they are, I prefer the circle, but Mark himself says, hey, I kind of like this. I like the way it works. And so I like that they're not just trying to drop another Battle Royale on the market that's just doing the same thing all the other ones are. So it, it it's really trying to differentiate itself from, from your War Zones and your Fortnites. Honestly, I don't remember. Was there a mini-map? It's not very helpful. 
No, there's not a mini map. I remember okay, Cody complaining I, about that. I, I thought there wasn't, and I'm like, how am I supposed to know what zones are closing if there's no map in front of me? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that being a problem. And just your so the other thing about this game, it, Scott has played the, the game I'm about to talk about a lot more than me, but it it's really fast, and so it feels kind of like a Unreal on PC where the movement is fast, the aiming is fast. And as a console gamer playing this on console, I felt like it didn't have um, the tools that other battle royales have on console to help console players out. Um, it just felt like I was trying to aim with a mouse and keyboard, but with my controller, which is near impossible. Um, I did find that you can adjust the settings to lower the speed of your aiming when you're mm -hmm. viewing like and so i did do that but it's you have to crank it way way down because the speed when you go iron sights or use your your sighting on your gun is so incredibly fast it was like you barely bump the stick and you're like looking in the opposite direction yeah i don't know did you get to a point where you were able to adjust it to your liking jeff no because i felt like the, the way the game plays is supposed to be fast. And when you turn your sensitivity right. down that much, you put yourself at a disadvantage. And so I found it hard to find a happy place of I'm moving away that feels comfortable to me, but not so slow that I can't actually win fights. Yeah. What about you, Mark? Yeah, I, I, that was my kind of consensus on, you know, did I want to crank the sensitivity of of the uh, the controls down but the game you're uh just right it plays so fast that you almost have to have it that way to get the entire the the whole experience of what the game's mm -hmm. trying to do and so I, I i i i tweaked it down just a little bit i didn't really notice a whole uh, a difference a whole lot um but i just i i chalked that up to hey that's part of the gameplay experience or that's what ubisoft wants us to to feel is that hey the the gunplay mechanics are just as fast as you know uh the entire game and so you just have to get used to that real quick i want to talk about the uh in in the solo portion of the game uh once you get down to a certain number of players or a certain time span i guess the game introduces a crown and um if you if you find the crown and you and you hold it for I think it's like 30 seconds or 45 I don't know I forget how long it is you automatically win it doesn't matter how many players are left on the on the map uh, you automatically win and that led me I only got to I played a handful of games where and I got to that point yeah, once I, or I, twice I, I, never I never got won. to that point and I knew about the crown mechanic but I never got to experience it myself so I wasn't sure what all was gonna go along so, with that I was gonna I was going to discuss it next, but I was just wasn't sure where it went with it. Yeah, so I have questions about this thing. So if you have the crown, does it make you visible to everyone on the map? Yes. Uh, okay. You, you will. You, when, when, and that, that's where the not having a mini-map kind of makes everything crap. Is because you have to go to the pause menu to look at your map. And, um, you know, so while you're in the pause menu looking for who is, who's got the crown... Somebody comes up behind you and caps you in the back of the head, and you know that's that's it for you. But no, I, I, one of the frustrating things about uh, at least the solo aspect of this game is that the maps the map is large, and there's so many people, so the map kind of by default has to be large unless you just want everybody to have this all out shootout. It it, it kind of rewarded people for hiding, and I didn't I don't like that. I don't like that about a a battle royale game that you can kind of just camp out and and wait out everybody to kill each other and then f seek out the crown. I, and I guess maybe that's what Ubisoft was going for with you know. Well, that, I think that's that aspect. true of most battle royales though. You can choose to engage or play cautiously. Yeah, but but with this with this one, you did the the gunplay the gunplay mechanics weren't weren't good enough to reward the hey, I'm just gonna go for it mentality yeah okay uh, so I, I did want to talk about the gunplay mechanics here did either of you feel that the guns were very underpowered um some of them 
so this is not a hit scan game. It, it, it is a projectile game, so you need to lead your shots. And the bullets don't feel as fast as they do because, e like, even Warzone is not hit scan where you point and click and that does damage. Uh, the bullets do have a travel time. But I felt like these bullets were even slower than the bullets in Warzone. And that takes a lot of getting used to. So I don't know if the gun was necessarily underpowered or if I just stunk at the game. It's probably so the latter. I, a couple games, I had the minigun, okay? And that shoots pretty quickly. I had a guy in my face and I was unloading the minigun on him and could not down him. And him and his partner ended up downing me. And I'm like, how am I not winning this firefight when I'm going straight up, you know, in his face with this minigun? And it's like, and I think you've got what? You've got like, I want to say it's like 10 or so little like life bars on your, like your health pool type of thing. And it's like, it's almost like a shield, I guess, so to speak. Uh -huh. Kind of like in uh, Halo where, you know, you, you, you get your, once your shield is taken down, then you finally get killed. Mm -hmm. But it was almost like your shield was just so much that it was like you had to chip through a huge shield pool before you could kill anybody. Yeah, the the recoil on a lot of these guns was all over the place. Um, oh, yeah. And like I noticed on the minigun, I had the recoil is so-so, uh, but then you had this this one you know hand, semi-automatic handgun of sorts that had this gigantic recoil i just you know the disparity between uh the recoil of the different the different types of guns was just all over the place it it kind of soured me on on just how good the game is at the current moment um and that's you know i guess that's the, the why why it's in beta is that's something that they can improve on it's just um, the recoil behind the guns is all over the place. Is there anything else we want to talk about in the gameplay that you guys can think of? I feel like we covered it pretty well. Paywall. So the paywall, it looks like there it's mainly cosmetics. Yeah. Um, characters, cosmetics for the characters, the way they look, the way your guns look. I uh, believe there was a battle pass. Um, I didn't look at prices so much. But there is an in-game currency that you have to purchase to be able to purchase everything else. I didn't even look at it. Actually, you know what? I can pull it up on the Xbox app. Hold on a second. I forgot. I have there a... is a reminder for the big jibble. Oh, is there? Well, thank uh, you. I feel like your Google Home is, is like the fourth host of this podcast. It should be. <laughs> she has the Australian accent. And she's the best. <laughs> The, uh, no, nah, I mean, you know. Okay, uh, so there's the the currency is called Bit Crowns. And... Oh, I thought you were going to say Bit Crap. Yeah, Bit Crap. No, Bitcoin. Like, like no. Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, Bit Crowns. Um, there's different uh, amounts that you can purchase. Actually, you got to do it in the game. I can't pull up the prices on the, the Xbox app, but. Yeah, there was different uh, amounts of currency that you could purchase, and then of course you have to purchase the everything else with that in-game currency that you've already purchased. So they they probably sell you more, or sorry, they probably sell you less currency than what you actually need to purchase items, like a lot of other games out there. But I didn't, I can't confirm that or deny it. So not really paywall in-game related, but I played on the PS4. And I know on the uh, on the the Xbox One, you have to you know, have a uh, an Xbox Live subscription to play. Mm -hmm. On the PS4, you do not have to be a PS uh, Plus subscriber. Oh. Um, you okay. can just down you can download and play. And so I thought that was pretty unique. Um, well, it's not I, unique because it's the same on Nintendo. So, um, like, I downloaded Smite on my Switch. And I don't have Nintendo online, and I was able to play online, but Xbox is the only console that has online multiplayer behind a paywall on free games. Yeah. Where it's Which such a, a weird shame. distinction, because if you're paying for a game, and the game, the online play is behind the paywall... And the I don't I don't know I, I I think it's kind of paying for online plays 
or I would say it's becoming a way it's archaic, but the thing is, is that Xbox is so much better at online than everyone else. I don't have a problem paying for it because I don't have a friend code I need to give anyone. And I, you know, and Sony's is, is better than Nintendo's, but it's not as good as Xbox. So I'm fine paying for Xbox online, but for someone who's not fine with that, you're better off playing on PlayStation 4. Yeah, that was, it was. Yeah, I just wasn't expecting. I was expecting to have to, you know, free trial of PlayStation Plus, or you know, um, but that, I mean, that's also. That. Yeah, that's also why you know, you know, M, M S Microsoft is spelled with the the dollar sign, not the S. So I will take my microsoft xbox live over playstation network any day i mean sure i mean yeah we're not we're not arguing the validity no, of what we were online talking experience. about here no you i'm know, just saying if you guys you want to argue that you do that on your th- off weeks you don't think sony <laughs> loves money as much as microsoft it's just microsoft <laughs> apparently not money a- apparently they do not love money as much as microsoft oh bull they copied them they went with the playstation plus and they just released a dumpier version of it let's move on hey <laughs> sony doesn't have to do what microsoft does because they own spider-man case in point we're done that doesn't make sense okay <laughs> we'll just that was wow wow they're what making a, hand, money hand over fist with spider-man what a smoking gun of an argument <laughs> <laughs> Oh. They have Venom 2 coming out. They're making plenty of money. Yes. Replayability. Uh yeah, it's a it's a it's a battle royale. I mean, I don't know what else to say. No, you're right. It is. It's, you know, completely 100% replayable as long as there's a player base. Yeah. And there you go. And, yeah, I mean, and, I, I, and with and it right being now, backed by Ubisoft, they'll probably be oh, a yeah. player base unlike uh, your Darwins and your um uh, what was the other the realm what was royale. the high res one realm royale yeah unlike those that kind of had to drop in player bases being that this is ubisoft you'll probably still have a player base for a good long while uh, I well mean, look and not at, only that once they go to cross-platform playability that will probably increase the player base anyways too yeah i'm a little worried about that when they start bringing keyboard and mouse players into this game against controllers oh yeah we controller yeah. players are going to get destroyed unless they fix something within the game for yeah. the uh, console players because right now it's there's no contest i'm sure yeah the um so uh, the other games that ubisoft montreal has made they've just all been meh you know um and that's kind of what this game is too. So it, it doesn't really bode well um, for the longevity of this game, I don't think. But who knows? So what's different about Montreal's Ubisoft than any of the other ones? Uh, just the their game catalog. You know, uh, they made Far Cry New Dawn, which was a meh um, Suedo expansion to Far Cry Five. Um, uh, they they made the original Watch Dogs, which was had had a unbelievable premise, uh, but was just men execution, and they, I didn't realize that they were also making the upcoming Assassin's Creed Valhalla game, which kind of s- has soured me on looking forward to that too, is because that's probably going to be meh. See, I thought the Ubisoft Assassin's Creed titles were like done by pretty much every single Ubisoft. Uh, office whenever they make stuff no they they put they they partial it out uh, depending on what other studios are working on at the time um you know valhalla is supposed to be kind of a a launch a launch title for these upcoming new consoles so okay they 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 let ubisoft montreal make this one and the the next time they'll make on ubisoft are you snoring jeff huh I thought, oh, welcome back to the uh, Ubisoft uh, Corporate Structure Podcast, where we discuss how Ubisoft as a company works. No. Back to you, Ubisoft as a (laughs) Ubisoft as a company has, or as this developer goes, the studio inside the larger portion of Ubisoft has made not so great games. And so I tie that into the longevity of this game. I'm sorry you don't like talking about it, Jeff. 
but it has all the relevance in the replay. <sighs> There's somebody out there that's going to listen to this that will comp- agree 100% with me. I don't know. The last poll I did, nobody agreed with you, except for maybe like four people. Hit us up that's on Twitter, true. at Budget that's Arcade, and let Mark know how correct he is. <laughs> and if you want to hear more about the inside workings of Ubisoft, let us know. And we'll make a new podcast just for that. Yeah. Starring Mark. Sorry you don't like talking about relevant stuff. Sorry. I apologize. Let's get back to this super fun game to talk about. Judgment. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, we've touched on the replay a bit. So at the end of each of our episodes, we vote on whether a game deserves our seal or not. It requires a two-third vote to be approved or denied. Mark, what do you say? I would give it my seal. Uh, <laughs> it's, as far as, like, Battle Royale shooters go, it's, it's, it's your run-of-the-mill stuff. However... I think because it has the Ubisoft, you know, backing and that it is another big But it's Ubisoft Montreal. Yes, but it has Ubisoft money behind it. Um anyways. Uh, hold so on. We're we're other boring other Jeff again. Produce. Let's not get into Ubisoft Montreal. God. Holy <laughs> hell. Mark, this, just continue. This, thank you. Uh so I think I think having different big studio uh battle royale games out there will make all battle royale games better in the future so uh it, it, the game's fine it's fun it you know it has a, a number of different stuff that the other battle royale games don't that will tickle your fancy for a little while so give it a try so, yes it was a yes thank that you is a thank yes. you mr i don't like multiplayer jeff what do you say um why are we hating on mark so much <laughs> i ask myself that all the time I, well all the time i ask that. i even asked that of elliot you i asked that of elliot and tessa why do you hate mark so much why do you think you're gonna sh- i why don't does hate you think mark but what Listen, you've done i'm just here giving my in the opinion seat that elliot and cody sat in and i yell in that direction i can't help that's it. fine it, okay it's fine. Hey, mark apparently tessa and elliot hate me just as much I'm the only they one. They hated you before they hated me, so it's Hey fine. Elliot! Hey Tessa! I'm the only one they like. I don't know why though. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what, Tessa and Elliot? <laughs> you. Oh. Uh, ooh. Um, so does this get my seal of approval? I'm gonna say no. And the reason being is there's this market the, the battle royale market's pretty saturated at this point. You got the Fortnites, you got the war zones. Uh, you got your PUBGs, you got your Apex Legends, and they all do things a little different, but they all do them better than this game does. Uh, this feels unfinished, even though at the beginning I said it felt like a full game. I lied. I don't know what I was talking about. I've been talked into it by the intelligence of Mark and Scott that this game is unfinished. And um, if you're on PC, I think maybe you'll like it more. But as for me and my console friends... It's not the best. I would say definitely download Warzone or Apex instead. So I'm on the fence about this game. I <laughs> I didn't really care for it, to be honest. And I do feel like it's very unfinished. But again, it's Ubisoft. It's got the money to back it. It may get better. Oh, hold on. Let's, let's dive into the hierarchy of the Ubisoft. Real hold quick. on now. No. Are we no. talking about Ubisoft <laughs> Montreal? <laughs> Because I got some, they... I got some things to say about Ubisoft Montreal. <laughs> you get a snore about it. I got a lot of emotions and feelings that come up when someone brings up Ubisoft Montreal. It gets me fired up. What are those feelings? Just finish this show. Come on. Uh, I, uh, uh, it's a no. There, there you go. I don't. I'm not feeling this game. I don't, it could be better. I mean, it definitely could be a lot better. It feels, the guns feel underpowered. I don't feel like the competitive rush that I feel like Warzone. Mm -hmm. And so this is definitely not for me. So this is not budget arcade approved. Yeah. Uh, It could be something that maybe we come back to. Uh, We did a revisit of Darwin when it, when it went into full release um, yeah, and I it, think maybe we'll do that. I'm going to label this episode as uh, 
I'm going to put beta in quotes, yeah. or not quotes, but brackets whenever I set up the, the episode stuff. So maybe we'll, we will revisit it and see whether or not the game improves down the line. So speaking of revisiting games, shout out to my boy Nomic. I've been playing some Dota Underlords. They just dropped a huge release, so maybe go dive back into that if you want. That game's pretty good. I jumped back into Chess Rust a little bit, too. It seems like they've improved that back to where it was. No, they still have featured heroes, which is something that I really dislike and wish they would take out of the game. Um, Yeah, you and me both. Which is why I kind of... when dota updated their game i was like oh i'll die back into this for a while because everybody starts out on even footing which to me is super important um this has been uh auto chess corner and uh let's let's close the show oh by the way legends of rune terror just dropped their first update and it is absolutely amazing it's budget arcade approved yeah it is so next game we're gonna play archer danger phone Ooh, if you're familiar with the, I don't know if it's Adult Swim or where. No, it's on FX. I believe. FX, yeah. Uh, the cartoon yeah, Archer. I think you're correct. Uh, it's, uh, this is the perfect game to play for episode 69, which I didn't know that the next episode was 69. When I pitched this game to Scott, it just is fortuitous. Yes, and this is a going to be a mature game. So uh, all you younger audience listeners do not looking at you elliot this This one is not for you bud (laughs) well we're also looking at you lincoln 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 is a grown man i don't know (laughs) (laughs) i'm not going to be responsible for him downloading it and then his mom getting yelling at me okay i'm going to give them your phone number no it's all right y'all listening is one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Give him a call. There's a uh, Spaceballs reference there somewhere, too. Yeah. It's the same as the combination on my luggage. All right. Take away those socials, Jeff. Oh, God. Uh, if for some reason you wanted to get in touch with us, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash budget arcade. We're on Twitter and Instagram at budget arcade. You can also check out our website, www.budgetarcade.com. You can uh, join us on our discord. Our discord is located in the show notes as well as on most of our socials. It's on our webpage. You just have to click, click the link to join. We have rousing conversations on there. It's uh, we're very really active fun. on there as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. We have, and we discuss more than just video games on there. Mark's got his own little uh, movie corner that he likes to uh, pull up in. Mark, talk speaking about. of movie corner, we got to talk about Bill and Ted's Face the Music. Did you spend twenty dollars on that already? I spent twenty five dollars on it to own it. Oh God! Oh God! Oh, Jeff, can I come over and watch it with you? Uh, I don't know about that, but I'll loan you my password. <laughs> <laughs> My, my family this, is, in, in this is age social of COVID. distancing quite well, yeah, so. Well, yeah, I know. Your, your family's kind of anti-social distancing, right? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. So if I'm anti-social and I'm dis... My head yes. hurts. Uh, if you want to help support the show, you can join us at patreon.com slash budget arcade. There is a link in the show notes that you can donate money to if you'd like to do that as well. Or you can purchase our apparel at hotkeygaming.com slash budget hyphen arcade. And don't forget to use the promo code. But biscuits. And our music is provided by Stimage. You can check out his music at metroidmetal.com. And everybody game on. Bye. Except for you, Elliot. No games. You're on probation.
Imagineville Podcast Network. Hey guys, it's Mike. As you know, I adopted my pup Rocky from a local rescue. Now, when people ask me what kind of dog Rocky was, I was always stumped. I used an Embark Dog DNA test to decode my most puzzling questions about Rocky. You can also learn about your dog's inner secrets with Embark, the highest rated dog DNA test. Unlock over 350 breeds and screen for over 200 genetic health risks. Save $50 on a breed and health kit with promo code KIT at EmbarkVet.com. Again, that's promo code KIT.